Hi, boys and girls. Miss Lehman here with some more of our book, Dexter the Tough. We're on chapter 15. Psst. It was time for recess the next day. Dexter was just walking out of the school, last, as usual. The psst came from behind the door. Then there was a whisper. Hey, Dexter, over here. Dexter let the door swing shut. Robin was crammed in behind the door like some sort of secret agent. I've got someone for you to talk to, Robin whispered. Follow me. Robin yanked the door open again and slipped inside. I don't think we're supposed to, Dexter started to say. Robin poked his head out the door. What? I can't hear you through the glass. Come on, hurry up. Dexter sighed and followed Robin. Who had ever heard of anyone sneaking back into a school building during recess? Robin led Dexter away from the fourth grade hallway into a part of the building that Dexter had never seen before. Judging from the crooked finger paintings hanging on the wall, it was probably the kindergarten wing. There he is, Robin said softly. A man with a broom was sweeping dirt into a dustpan. Mr. Chandler, this is the kid I was telling you about, Robin said. Mr. Chandler, this is Dexter. Dexter, this is Mr. Chandler. Mr. Chandler was young and had a ponytail that hung halfway down his back. He had a bandana wrapped around his head like a pirate. Nice to meet you, Dexter, Mr. Chandler said, holding out his hand. From what Robin tells me, I think I owe you an apology. Something about, um, polishing the floors too well? Uh, Dexter said. He didn't know what else to do except shake Mr. Chandler's hand. Mr. Chandler's the janitor, Robin said. He's really, um, a nice guy. Yeah, I felt terrible when Robin told me about you falling down your very first day here, Mr. Chandler said. Think I should change the brand of floor wax we use? Dexter shrugged. Robin started nodding like crazy. I've got an idea, Robin said. Maybe Dexter and me could help you try out the different kinds, see what would work best without getting too slippery. Could we? Sure, Mr. Chandler said. I always liked having helpers. See, Robin told Dexter, didn't I tell you he was nice? Dexter flushed red. What if Robin had told Mr. Chandler that Dexter hated him? It wasn't just falling down that made me mad, he mumbled. The, the, the secretary was mean to me, too. Oh, right. She went off and left you in the middle of the hall, Robin said, and you didn't know where you were or what you were supposed to do. <clears throat> Betty Sue did that? Mr. Chandler said. He looked shocked. Betty Sue's the nicest person I've ever met. She wouldn't leave a new kid alone when... Wait a minute. When was your first day? Monday, a week ago, Dexter said. Oh, Mr. Chandler said. I bet I know what happened then. What? Robin asked. Well, one day last week, it had to have been Monday, Betty Sue caught that stomach bug that's been going around, Mr. Chandler said. She kept having to run to the bathroom to throw up. She said she wanted to finish up her work before she went home to rest and get better. And I remember now, she said she threw up for the first time right before the first bell rang. That must have been what she must have been when she was taking you to your class. But Betty Sue would have apologized. She wouldn't have been mean about it. Dexter narrowed his eyes, staring at some kindergartner's mess of red and blue paint. Now that he thought about it, he remembered that the secretary had looked pale and clammy, and she'd have beads of sweat on her upper lip right before she'd run away, leaving him behind. And she'd said something, but Dexter hadn't really heard her. It'd been right then that he'd stepped forward and his feet had flown out from under him and he'd crashed to the ground and all those kids had laughed at him. And then he'd run into the bathroom. And when he came out of the bathroom and saw the secretary again, maybe she had said something. Maybe she'd made all kinds of apologies. Dexter hadn't been able to listen to anything then because his ears were buzzing and his eyes were blurry. And his hand hurt from hitting Robin. Maybe you should talk to Betty Sue, Mr. Chandler was saying. She'd feel really bad if she knew you were still upset. She'd probably bake you some chocolate chip cookies to make it up to you, he grinned. If she does, will you share some with me? It was hard to hate Mr. Chandler when he was grinning like that, and it was hard to hate anyone named Betty Sue. That's okay, Dexter mumbled, staring at his shoes. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad anymore. That's great, Mr. Chandler said, stepping forward to pick up his dustpan. Now, if you don't mind, I really need to finish this hallway before the afternoon kindergartners. Mid-stride, one of his feet shot out from under him. His arms flailed backwards like he was trying to grab for the broom to hold himself up. But the broom flipped over and landed on the handle of the dustpan. 
It flipped over too, sending an arc of dust flying up into the air. The dust landed right on top of Mr. Chandler. Flakes of dirt hung in his eyelashes. Dexter didn't mean to laugh, but it was impossible not to. The giggles came bursting out of him. Robin was laughing too. Oh, so sorry, Mr. Chandler, Robin managed to say between giggles. We shouldn't. Are you all right? Mr. Chandler stood up and brushed himself off. He took off his bandana and shook the dust from it down into the dustpan. That's okay. You can't be a janitor and be afraid of a little dirt. And I guess I deserve that for polishing the floor so much that even I slip on it. We're testing new floor cleaners tomorrow, you hear. And, he rubbed his elbow, the part that had hit the floor the hardest, I definitely need your help. Chapter 16. Dexter sat at Grandma's kitchen table with the graham cracker box and two cans of pears. He built a little fortress around his homework paper. He glanced once towards the living room where Grandma had the TV turned up loud. If he leaned forward a little, he could hear her on the couch slumped over. This time, he wasn't scared that she was dead. In fact, he was glad she was sleeping. That meant she wouldn't see what he was working on. The reason Robin was crying was because he was homesick. And kids teased him about his name and called him a crybaby. And he'd never gone to school before, just had his mom teach him. And he didn't know how to make friends. And what was he supposed to write next? And so I hit him? Dexter crumpled the paper and hid it behind the graham cracker box. He got out another sheet of paper. He smoothed it down flat and started over. Robin had lots of reasons for crying. None of them had anything to do with me. It wasn't my fault he was crying. I had lots of reasons for being mad, too. The secretary... Dexter stopped again. He sounded really stupid if he said he was mad at the secretary for getting sick. That'd be as bad as saying he was mad at dad, his dad for getting sick. Wait a minute. Had he been mad at dad for getting sick? Dexter crumpled up that piece of paper, too. He tried again. A bunch of kids laughed at me. Except Dexter had laughed too when Mr. Chandler slipped and fell. He looked so funny spinning his arms in the air, pumping his legs like someone in a cartoon. Nobody could have watched that without laughing. Maybe Dexter had looked even funnier. Another balled up piece of paper joined the others behind the graham cracker box. Dexter pulled out one more sheet of paper and stared at it. It was blank and white and empty. It stayed empty. The longer it stayed empty, the angrier Dexter got. Finally, he picked up this pencil and scrawled, this is a stupid assignment. Nobody should have to write this. It's dumb. Really, really, really dumb. He'd never in a million years hand that in, but it made him feel better to write it down. Boys and girls were starting to get to the bottom of things. It sounds like Dexter maybe now is realizing that people at the school didn't dislike him and that maybe some of it was in his imagination. I wonder how this story is going to turn out, and I wonder how things are going to go with his family and if he's ever going to get the dog he wanted. I guess we'll find out next time. Have a great rest of your afternoon.